News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset, y'all. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. The, uh, this is incredible. I mean, I said it yesterday. I said it the day before. We've been watching history unfold in front of our eyes, and it's incredible. And we're never going to see anything like this again, possibly in our lifetime. It's beyond unbelievable what we're watching. And uh, much to the horror of Joe, three weeks after George Clooney held a fundraiser for uh, Joe Biden, where all of us saw Joe having to be you know, stiff as a board, being walked off the stage by a former president, Hussein Obama. All of a sudden, George Clooney, he raises tens of millions of dollars, if not more, right? Three weeks ago, says nothing, says nothing. Hey, Joe's incredible. He's awesome. Yes, Joe Biden. Today, you've got some high profile people that were formerly in the Obama administration say, yeah, I was there and it was horrible. Where the bleep were you three weeks ago? Y'all are a bunch of liars. The liars have come forward today and said, he can't do it, he can't do it. But they shut up for three weeks. You know why? If he was a vegetative state but somehow pulled it off at the debate, they wouldn't say a darn thing. They are all liars. This is the greatest cover-up in, in possibly in history with the president's uh, infirmities. Because here's the thing. You could say, well, Chris, no. I mean, FDR, I think it was, was in a wheelchair. Um or was it, uh, uh, there's, there's a couple different ones. Earlier on, they covered it up. Woodrow Wilson, his wife, the past 16 months or uh, a year and a half of his administration was running the country. More so than she let on to in her book. And uh, uh, not a Dr. Jill, Nurse Jill, not a Dr. Jill, whatever you want to call her. She is participant in this too. She's the new Woodrow, wife of Woodrow Wilson, Edith Wilson. But she's even worse. This is the most, I think, modern uh, cover up in, in history because... We have every ability to get that out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, this has been a cover-up that's been insane. Guess what I heard today? Some of Obama's actual staffers were watching the debate and fell on the floor and lay on the floor because they were so stunned during the debate when they saw what he was doing. Like they, they these are ones that are in the tertiary there. They're in the, they're in the area, but they're not in the intimate. They had no idea this man was a vegetable. So during the debate, there was a report today, I think from Axios or one of those leftist uh, websites that gets it right. Um, Now they, of course, like everybody else, has turned on the president, New York Times, Atlanta Journal, Constitution, Chicago Tribune, et al. Uh, But this... um, His staff fell on the floor and lay on the floor because they could not believe how much of a vegetable their boss was or is. Meanwhile, George Stephanopoulos was asked about this in person. Did you catch that? He uh, was asked in person by a guy who just walked up to him on the street and said, hey, is Joe Biden going to do you think he should run? Can he do another four years? You just interviewed him. Here it is. Hey, excuse me. Hey, how you doing? What do you think? Do you think Biden should step down? You talk to him more than anybody else have lately. And you could be honest. You don't think he can start four more years? Oops. And then he tried to retract it or draw it back. But now we know what he said. He said what he said because he meant it. And then here's what's incredible. Nancy Pelosi is so old, she she doesn't realize, she, she forgot that Joe Biden just a few days ago said, I'm in this forever. I'm not getting out ever, ever, ever. Then why did Nancy Pelosi this morning go on national television and say, Joe needs to decide? It's up to the president to decide if he is going to run. Uh, we're all encouraging him uh, to to make that decision uh, because time is running short. Do you did, want him to run? I want him to do whatever he decides to do. Did, did this woman not see the man every day uh, in the news saying he's running unequivocally? There's no question. His letter, did she not read his letter demanding everybody stop going after him and his party? And today she says, well, it's up to him. What do you mean it's up to him? Did you not? Can Do somebody, I don't advocate violence towards anybody, but does somebody need to take that letter, roll it up with a single sheet so it won't hurt anybody, and beat you over the head with a single sheet of paper rolled up? Are you that stupid? Are you worse than Joe, Nancy? 
All right, so we've lost. He's lost George Clooney. All hope is lost. When George Clooney leaves you, you're done. Or are you? Do you think anybody will get Joe Biden to step down? It's clear everybody and their brother that's in his party wants him to step down. Everybody on our side wants him to stay in. Joe, Joe, you answered all the questions. We're so proud of you, Joe. You did a great job. Now to Dr. Jill says, do you think anybody can get Joe to step down? And do you think he will before the convention or after the convention? Or never. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. It's important to let you know. Chime in right now. Lines wide open. It's important to let you know that Dana Perino said today on Fox, she's the former uh, spokesperson for uh, George Bush's White House, that uh, she does not think at all that Joe Biden's going to be on the ballot in November. She does not think so. And what's incredible is every single moment we see new people coming out and saying, get stepped out from his party. People on our side don't mean anything. It's his party. And I'm going to go over the uh, Wall Street Journal article that they just released today. And it's got they actually have a tracker. Because they have a tracker that shows you how many Democrats have called for him to step down now. And it is ticking up. It went up to, I think, nine. It was at eight this afternoon. Now it's at nine senators and uh, congressmen sitting. Senators and congressmen. So do you think Joe Biden, anybody will get him to, do you think anybody can get Joe to step down? And do you think he will before the convention, after the convention, or never? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. I don't think that he, he's going to step down. I, it, this is beyond unbelievable for us to see this. Um, it's incredible. I mean, every day, more and more and more of the biggest celebrities. But what's, what's, what, what's such a stupid, ridiculous, big, fat lie in the room is that people that were raising money for him, you know, saying how incredible he was, humping his leg three weeks ago, are now saying he's over. You're, I mean, do you not realize you, you lie, you've lied to us? They've all lied to us, every one of them. And we're hearing people say that, Kamala! <laughs> Today, uh, Trump calls her laughing Kamala. He needs to call, him, call her cackling Kamala with a K, cackling Kamala. A little alliteration. And uh, onomatopoeia, whatever it is. Uh, but uh, he, he said he started going after her and pivoting towards her. I read a column in the Wall Street Journal, which we'll share later. Jason Riley, uh, African-American columnist of upward mobility, says Kamala would be a much better threat to uh, to Trump. I'll get into that a little later. But right now, Scott in Arlington, you are on WBAP. I, I think they're going to have a medical uh, issue with him. That in ca- or basically, uh, I can't think of the word. I'm so tired. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> uh, Excuse me. Is this, wait, wait, hold on. Is this Joe Biden? No, it's not. Did, did you call in? <laughs> Mr. Biden, is that you, President Biden? Your voice sounds better. No. Okay, you know, I'm joking. No, no. I'm joking. I know. Um, but, uh, you this, think he's going to have a, a quote-unquote medical like issue? He ends up with a stroke or something, and they're going to say he's in, incapable of continuing. Not out, of the 25th, not out of the 25th Amendment, though. Well, and see, that's what I'm trying to figure out, because, again, I again, I always said this a long time ago. I didn't ever think he would actually run again, get to this next one. I, well, I didn't think they would let him. I thought what they would do is Kamala's got so many skeletons in her closet and stuff like that, that they would just come out and get rid of her. I always thought at least my always thing was is that was going to end up he was going to um, have something medical happen to him where he's going to get out. They have the Senate control, so they get to pick their person to put in as vice president. So they would put in their vice president person as the Senate. But you think the medical the issue is going to be fake? Uh, you know, we already know what it is. Oh, I don't know be- if it, I don't know if it'll be fake or not. I think they might actually again because he's defying the leadership. Here's the problem: I think they may just take him out, just like the CIA took out. Okay, the, you, Assa- know, you think they're going to assassinate him? Is what you think? No, I don't think. No, I don't think they'll assassinate him. I don't think. I don't think they want to do that because he's a follower. I think they're just going to do something to. Basically, take him down enough to where he's Physi- like. You think they're going to do something physically to hurt him? 
I think just something medical. Okay. I think something like, you know. But they're going to force, they're going to do something to him. I'm trying to pull that out of you. You're saying they're going to do something to him physically that will make him uh, unable. That's yeah, it. I think something okay. they're going to do something to where he either has a minor stroke or a stroke okay. of some kind where he's incapable of communicating properly, incapable of doing his duties, okay. you know, I, as leader in chief. I think know? I think they I think what's more likely, I don't think that's likely at all, especially with everything modern today. I mean, it's hard to, you know, so easy to prove stuff and uh, get somebody busted. I think the more he's more likely to. And by the way, I want to tell you, Scott, great call. I appreciate your call. Look forward to your next one, brother. Um, thank you. Um, I think it's more likely that he they're going to make up a medical excuse and pretend it's something new. Uh, they're not going to admit the truth, which we all know is he's, that he and his entire family and uh, his uh, top people have been lying to us. And by the way, if you think this is Obama forcing him out, it is not. Obama cannot force him out. I'm going to tell you why Obama cannot force him out and why people that think Obama is really running things are wrong, dead wrong. I'm being serious. That is next on the Chris Croc Show plus your call. 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227, and so much more fun, fun, fun audio. You're going to hear from, uh, uh, what's his name, Biden's uh, biographer. He's now turning on. The biographer of his book is now turning on. That's amazing. All that next on the Chris Crock Show on News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Biden himself, the deal was written answers to written questions. I'd never heard of that before. Was that a red flag for you? Well, look, you know, you can you can look at it two ways. I mean, this is obviously a White House with either either with something to hide or just obsessed with controlling the narrative. Um, I will tell you that one of the president's closest friends thinks that Joe Biden should go up to Walter Reed, have a complete neurological exam, release the results and let the chips fall. Now, I don't think that friend has said this out loud yeah. to Joe Biden, because that's a hard thing even for a close friend to tell him. That is uh, the author of a Biden biography. Uh, so uh, there you go. One of his closest friends wants him to get a test. Uh, in fact, guys, I mean, who has not come out and told him he's got to step down or get tested? Uh, in fact, I think his neighbor has just come out moments ago. I'm getting wait. I'm getting word in my ear. Yes, the neighbor has now come out. Wait. Holy gosh. Joe Biden's garbage man has just come. What? And his postal delivery guy, the postal worker. What do you call it? The letter carrier. The letter carrier to Joe. Biden. Wait. The newspaper delivery. Oh, no. Him, too. I'm sorry. It's a her. Wait, I'm sorry. It's a they. Them. Oh, my gosh. Holy gosh. Wait. Joe's podiatrist just came out. Oh, my gosh. Quote, I deny all knowledge of him and his shuffling. I've never seen it before, but this looks bad. Has anybody not come out and said it? All right, uh, here we go. Uh, George Clooney. He lost George Clooney. Actually, you, 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 do you want to hear the most, the funniest thing in the world, the most pathetic thing? They're getting so pathetic in the Biden administration. They they attacked George Clooney after he said <laughs> after his editorial, they attacked him. The man who's like an A-lister who raised tens of millions of dollars for him and was humping his leg three weeks ago. This disowns him in the New York Times this morning, and they attack him. You'll hear that in uh, a, at eight thirty. Let's go first to Noreen and Richardson, who's called in at eight hundred two eight eight WBAP eight hundred two eight eight nine two two seven. I'm asking if you think anybody can get Joe to step down. Do you think he'll he will before the convention, after the convention, or never? Noreen, you're on WBAP. Hi there. Hi. Um, I I think Joe will do whatever the the money machine uh, decides needs to be done. I, I think this is all about the money and the deals uh, uh, going on there. Um, and I would also like to say the moment I heard his son Hunter was hanging out at the White House, my first thought was in the Oval Office meetings. And guess what I just heard today. In addition to Hunter, it is also not a Dr. Jill now attending them. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I think they're uh, his personal security. I think with with the horrible debate. You think they're going to come out? Um, I, I think they're scared 
something might happen to him. And I think they're they're keeping a family member on him. Uh, oh, so they can witness. Oh, my gosh. Now, I'm going to tell you something else, too. Uh, the Barack Obama people are not in charge. They are not in charge. Uh, Joe Biden and his family hate the Hussein Obama family. They hate him. You know why? Because to the moment. each other. <laughs> What's that, brother? What's that, man? They, they hate each other. <laughs> yes, because here's why. He, uh, Mr. Hussein Obama, chose uh, uh, the lozenge lizard Hillary over him. Coughing Hillary over him. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. she lost. And he was like, I could have won that. And I could have been younger mm-hmm. and done all this. And you destroyed it. And the people that point to Anita Dunn, a former top Hussein Obama uh, official uh, in his administration for eight years, uh, she's been out for a year. She hasn't been there for a year. They're, they're, it's all staffed with Biden people. And um, I'm quoting some of the uh, stuff from my friend Eric Erickson, uh, who's a was a Fox News commentator, CNN commentator, radio guy who used to fill in for me. And he's a, like one of the top bloggers. Rush used to quote him all the time for years um, because he's right. And he says, no, there's not one of them in there anymore. They hate they hate each other. And uh, he says that the ineptitude, the incompetence and everything you're seeing in this administration for three and a half years is clearly not the Obama administration, who we don't agree with anything they do for the most part, but they know how to run the show, which is why they got it reelected and why they won. This guy's an idiot, and, and everybody knows that, and everybody in there around him are idiots and sycophants and far leftists. Go ahead. I think the corruption in this uh, uh, administration is reprehensible, disgusting. You think it's worse than um, the uh, Obama administration and the Clinton administration? I do. Yeah. I, I think do. you're right. I think I'm you're right. I'm thinking Afghanistan. I'm thinking Israel. No, no, no. Is it, uh, me, nobody died under his watch. He said it during the debate. Not one soldier's died. It's Trump they all died of. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So yeah. you need to get with the program, man. And vote I'll for try. Joe. Vote I'll for try. Joe. Keep I'll, vote, keep, I'll keep listening. Keep to you. voting Democrat. We're almost there. We're really close. We're almost there for the inflation, the interest rates, grocery. We're so close. Okay, just keep voting Democrat. Okay. Yeah. My beautiful daughters were born in Delaware, and I never, not once, voted for that man in the White House. Did you? Did you ever bump into uh, Hunter's crack dealer? What was that guy's name? <laughs> I didn't hang out. Remember his name? Remember his name? I got to look it up real fast. Hunter's crack dealer. Let's see. Hunter's crack dealer name. uh, Name. It was some. It's an amazing name. Uh, Mm -hmm. Gosh, I got to get it. Hold on. Hold on. Who is this guy? It's going to come up here in a second, but uh, I'll get it in a second. This is going to be so much fun. We yeah, no, I, 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 didn't, I didn't hang out in that neighborhood. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, I appreciate you very much. Uh, thank you. All right, uh, coming up next, Corinne Jean-Pierre admits to literally giving false information about the Parkinson's doctor visiting Joe. Today she admits that she, was, uh, she gave false information. Well, this is what happens when you got a lie and you've been lying for three and a half years. All right, that is coming up next, plus Hunter's Crack Dealer's name. I can't remember what it was, but it's a, it's a rich, awesome name uh, who sold him golf ball uh, size cocaine rocks, nonetheless, which is nothing compared to the Dave Chappelle uh, character who smoked apparently uh, what were they, bowling ball size uh, uh, crack cocaine rocks. In response to those comments from George Clooney, Jake, a campaign official who attended that Los Angeles fundraiser tells me that George Clooney left three hours before the president. So clearly the gloves are off, Jake. What, but what does that mean that George Clooney left three hours? What's, what's the point? The point of that is to suggest that Biden's stamina is better than Clooney's and Clooney didn't have you know eyes on the entire event. That's the response uh, to, uh, to the Clooney op-ed. They are so smart. They are so smart. Okay. That's what he said right there. Okay. Let me, let me rewind that so I can get the full effect. Uh, to, uh, to the Clooney op-ed. Okay. Yeah. So his excuse, he goes, uh, okay. Like, yeah, right. He's smiling and, you know, kind of laughing. So the Biden administration is incredible. Uh, Joe runs backwards on his butt cheeks, 100 miles an hour. Uh, He can outlap you uh, if you're the fastest runner. Uh, In reverse on butt cheeks going backwards, uh, he's just that incredible. The man's stamina is beyond belief. And he actually has more stamina than the sexy, super hot George Clooney. 
Let's hear what a doctor said yesterday on NBC News. You notice when he turns, it's kind of empty. What do you oh, mean? Rigidity, loss of arm swing, standing up lordotically. You notice when he turns, it's kind of end block turning. It's not a quick turn. Um, so la- la- that's one of the hallmarks of Parkinson's is rigidity and bradykinesia, slow movement. And he has that hallmark, especially with the uh, low voice he said was a cold hypophonia a small monotone voice like this over time is a hallmark of Parkinsonism. I could have diagnosed him from across the mall. But once you start manifesting the hallmark motor symptoms, right. slow movement, rigidity, mass facies, hypophonia. I mean, if a med student did not pick Parkinson's on the test, they'd be so, remediated. So, well, that's it. He has it. And I can see it from across the room. And uh, that is a Parkinson's doctor on NBC News yesterday. Meanwhile, look at this. Chuck Todd, the NBC chief political analyst, says that two years ago, a uh, senior member of Joe Biden's cabinet told him two years ago they had serious concerns about the president running again. They had to drag it out of him. The White House did that. They had this neurological test. They have no credibility left on this topic. Anyway, um, I had a cabinet secretary two years ago. He said, all out of the blue, asked me, do you really think he's going to, he can't run again like this. And I said, he said, uh, t- t- uh, what's his name? Chuck Todd says, and I said, well, you have more interaction with him than I do. And they said, I don't have a lot of interaction with him. That's a pretty senior cabinet secretary. This was two years ago. And he says, this is one of those, you know, in the classic open secrets and non-versation, right? In a non-versation, non-conversation, I think he means it, right? It's the story everybody knows and no one was. Everybody was afraid to talk about it. Okay, Chuck Todd lied to us for two years. Chuck Todd had news that he never shared with the world. See that? This is your news. Everything's a lie. They only tell you what they want to tell you. They hide real news. This is your news today in America. Meantime, Corinne Jean-Pierre lied. Oops, she lied. Or she misrepresented. Here's what she said today. Oops, I was wrong about Parkinson's, uh, doctor not, the Parkinson's doctor not visiting Joe. It was being cor- incorrectly assumed and insinuated that the president had seen Dr. Uh, Kennard more than three times. I said that it was only three times that the president had seen a neurologist. I didn't confirm the name, but I did say it was only three times. It was being incorrectly assumed and insinuated that the president was being treated for Parkinson's. I said right here that the president was not being treated for Parkinson's. I actually went a step further and said he wasn't taking medication for Parkinson's. I said that right here. It was also being assumed and insinuated that uh, Dr. Kernod was someone who only worked uh, on Parkinson's when, in fact, he's a general neurologist. That was something that Dr. O'Connor was actually able to confirm that he was uh, a general neuro- neurologist, not, not, in fact, a general neurologist. And we also wanted to set the, we just wanted to set the record straight. And so, uh, you know, it is important. We believe it was important to all of you. I actually even said here at the podium, if there was more information that we could provide, we would do that. We would do that. And we did. Uh, But many of the things that I said right here is in the letter. Oh, I'm sorry. She said it was your fault still. Okay. And George Clooney can't keep up with Joe Biden. See where this is all going now? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I want to ask you some serious questions about this as well, because the uh, Post today said two things. Corinne Jean-Pierre admits to giving false information about Biden neurology vi- neurology visit after outcry over uh, health misdirection, which you heard some of the explanation right there. He was seen with the neurologist Kevin Kennard, specializes in Parkinson's on January 17th. Um, it, KJP admitted late Yesterday, hours after telling reporters the opposite at her briefing, the New York Post says today, uh, the clarification came one day after she scolded a journalist who was pressing her for details about his visit. Number two, the Post also had an exclusive on this today as well. Later on, President Biden's physician, Kennard, met with Parkinson's disease specialist. I'm sorry, Dr. Uh, O'Connor, his regular physician who's covering everything up for him because he's a family friend and has business interests with Joe and uh, James Biden. President Biden's physician met with uh, the Parkinson's disease specialist in the White House. 
A top Washington neurologist, D.C. neurologist, had a meeting with Biden's personal doctor at the White House earlier this year. Visitor logs by the reviewed by the Post today show in their exclusive report. And he is a Parkinson's disease expert. Now, I want to ask you if you think Joe Biden has Parkinson's. You heard a physician officially diagnose him, even though he's never been in a room with him. He says it's totally obvious. And he explained why. I'm going to share with you something else. From uh, John Hop- John- Johns Hopkins Medicin- Med- uh, Hospital, Johns Hopkins Medicine is the top in the country, one of the top ones that there is, and uh, about what Parkinson's is, what the symptoms are, and clearly Joe has it from all, all that we're seeing. And I want to ask you a few things, and this gets personal, because we have loved ones, people that we cry for, our heart yearns for, our heart bleeds for, and who we love, we care for, and we see pass away from diseases like Parkinson's or dementia. My wife's father has vascular dementia, and it was because of her efforts to take him in and get diagnosed that she got that. She officially finally hooked him up with the VA. Her uh, His uh, spouse was not doing anything in that regard. She was taking care of him, but not, not uh, with the VA, which is insane. He's a veteran. So she's been down twice to Florida to care for him. Uh, My dearest mentor in my life that I'll ever have, and I do have right now, uh, has Parkinson's. And little by little, he's, you know, having to deal with that. So this is serious. It's nothing nothing to joke around about. Joe is is a joke, and this whole excuse is a joke because he's not stepping down, so therefore it's fair game. But this disease, the effects of it, people we love are serious. So do you believe Joe Biden has Parkinson's? What signs do you see that that make you believe he does, make you think he does? And have you had loved ones with the same symptoms? Stiff gait, shuffling, stiff arms when they their arms can't bend regular. And when, they, when they're called upon, they can't just turn like we all do, like that jerk around. If you watch me on the Facebook Live on my Chris Croc Show Facebook feed at Chris Croc Show. Uh, the face mask where the face isn't moving like normal, the expressions. Um... Uh, Let's go to Gregory in South Lake. Gregory's called in at 800-288-WBAP. I want you to chime in right now, 800-288-9227. Gregory, what do you got, WBAP? Well, Chris, I don't, uh, I'm don't. i not qualified to diagnose him. He, he seems to me to have symptoms of dementia based on people I've seen before. But I, I want to get to one very clear point here. You're right. He's not going to... He's not going to let go of this unless one of three things happen, okay? He has some kind of medical emergency, which I thought might be possible given the fact that you're trying to keep him hopped up on drugs of some kind or another um, for the times that he has to appear lucid. And uh, that's got to be a tricky deal. And they yes. overdose him or, yes. or, 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 you know, it's something like that. That could be a real problem. Or he could have some other kind of medical. And by the way, ADHD goals. drugs are what they can give him. My son utilizes them. He has ADHD. My daughter's tried them. I certainly do, but I don't take medication for that. But um, because of who I am and how it works for me. But it's everybody's different. But my son does. And that's a, it's a, it's a, usually like an amphetamine, et cetera, things right, that yeah. stimulate you. And so those are the ones that have been set by doctors uh, like, uh, in fact, I think uh, one of the ones from Johns Hopkins was saying that to Marty McCary, I think, said something like that was probably would probably be what they would utilize for that. It gives you yeah, hyper focus drug, and energy. The, Go ahead. The, the drug, the drug, you know, he may he may succumb to some kind of uh, side effect of a drug drug cocktail, maybe have a stroke or something like that. The second thing is, I you know, we've talked about this before, but I really think the 25th Amendment is still the hand grenade they could pull out because uh, if let's say they get eight of the cabinet and Kamala to go, okay, let's go, go 25th on Joe to get him out of the race. All right. And they require him to have a cognitive test during the four day waiting Wait, period. Real fast, real that. fast. Uh, you're, you, you're, I, you appear to be, hold on. You appear to be unaware of something. It's not just, he com- fa- you're wait, not, wait, no, wait. no, no, you're not, you're not aware of something in the process. You've missed a huge step, no, sir. No, I am aware. Hold Let on. Me. No, because you can't do that. In order to get, and you can say your last piece, Gregory, but listen, you did not finish the, uh, the 25th. The third thing, which is never going to happen, is he has to get two thirds of Congress, House and Senate, to vote to invoke the Twenty Fifth Amendment. I think it's two thirds or three fourths. I have to check it again. But there's no way in hell 
they, it snowballs chance in hell that you're going to get uh, two thirds to three fourths of Congress to vote to uh, enact it. And that's that's why. In fact, the numbers right now are nowhere near that. But Gregory, go ahead with your last point. If he fails a cognitive test, OK, it's going to be it, w- it would be a catastrophe if they did not. If the Congress, both the House and the Senate did not vote to throw him out at that point. That's what I'm that's what I'm trying to say. He, they can get that trifecta if he fails a cognitive test. He's he, he would be incompetent to be president, to hold the football and the codes and the all the, all the other deals. They would have to vote him out if he fails a cognitive test and a cognitive test is required after they pull the trick, the pull the initial trigger on the 25th Amendment. Um, I mean, the only other thing, the, the only other thing they can do is assassinate him. Other than that, you know, and maybe that'll happen and, and get couched as a medical thing or, you know, they'll get the same guys that did Kennedy to come in and help. All right. Yeah. So um, there, nobody's going to force him to do a cognitive test. Kamala would lose. Um, Kamala would lose. Uh, Biden's uh, they're not I would not give him his 200,000 200 million dollars or 100 million dollars somewhere around there depending who you ask to uh, run then she would have to get money for her campaign I'm going to quote pollster a uh, Democrat pollster Mark Penn by the way Gregory thank for your thank you for your passionate call I appreciate it very much um, but uh, Mark Penn uh, the, he was a Democrat Clinton pollster he still is a Democrat and he said there's no way um, as far as the campaign, he said, because somebody yesterday was asking me, Chris, w- because Joe Biden could give a hundred or two hundred million dollar war chest to the DNC, but they would not legally be able to use it for whoever took the place of Joe. And if Kamala invokes the twenty fifth amendment, she ain't getting anything because he won't give it to her. His family won't allow it because she's a traitor and a turncoat. Um, so uh, that's number one. And Mark, somebody yesterday said, and I couldn't answer because I'm not an election lawyer, but basically I know they said, well, well, how big of a deal is it if you if you don't have the hundred million if it goes to the DNC can't they just use it for him well they can assist but it's literally totally has to be separate and Mark Penn said this morning you cannot run a campaign you can't run without uh, that money you cannot run it's not possible for example who's going to pay for Kamala to uh, her staff her campaign to fly to a place to set up an event that's got to be perfect before she shows up for like what they go there for three four five they go there probably a week right you can't it's not on the taxpayer's dime to send her campaign staff to go set this up and arrange everything who's going to rent the venue who's going to pay for security who's going to pay for the cops there is no way in in a snowball chance you cannot run a campaign so if you don't have 100 to 200 million dollars that war chest you will not go and kamala won't get it um i have the exact rules of the 25th amendment i'll share with you it's very short and simple i have parkinson's disease and dementia uh and the uh, symptoms from Johns Hopkins. I want your thoughts too. Uh, Do you believe Joe Biden has Parkinson's? What signs make you think he does? And have you had loved ones with the same symptoms? And what do you see in Joe that you've seen in your loved ones? 800-288-WBAP. 800-288-9227. 800-288-9227. And of course, chime in about the uh, 25th Amendment stuff we were just talking about as well. Next on the Chris Crock Show on News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Uh, by the way, Parkinson's Foundation says advanced cognitive changes that impact daily living in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's are both types of dementia. So Parkinson's disease dementia can occur as Parkinson's advances. So it could be a combination or in tandem. There's so many different things that you and I don't know. Some of the symptoms, slow, stiff walking, which Joe has, tremors that affect the face, jaw, legs, arms, and hands, which we haven't seen that. I haven't. Trouble making balance, yet yeah, maintaining balance, totally. Problems with coordination, totally. A stiff feeling in arms, legs and torso completely with those arms bent all the time and such um uh, changes in handwriting depression well there's other stuff like that hallucinations dementia that's just terrible speaking communicating with others problem solving understanding abstract complex concepts forgetfulness paying attention this is all part of who joe is mike and granbury you're on uh welcome by the way uh, you're on wbap hi 
Yeah. Hey, thank, thanks for taking the call. Um, I'll I'll, uh, I'll get right to it. I, I'm a minister, and so I I don't know anybody personally with Parkinson's, but being in and out of hospitals and facilities, I've had my fair share of uh, you know interacting with those individuals. And even though I'm not a clinician, I believe that he does have it based on his gait. Um, not only that, but even though there's been no tremors in the jowls that I've noticed, there is a certain sag. If you look at the upper lips in the corner of his mouth, mm-hmm. you know, that mask that mm-hmm. you were talking about. Yeah. Um, a question that I had, though, was, you know, he's 80, 81 years old. If it should come out, you know, officially, which is a long shot, that he does have Parkinson's, what do you think are the ramifications if the Republican Party were to try to weaponize that? On the one hand, we could say, you know, yes, it's true. He does have this. They lied to us and what have you. But on the other hand, it could be seen as, you know, you're really kicking a guy while he's down. He's an 81 year old guy with a well, disability. Well, Trump has led the way properly for the most part and not gotten personal and stayed back. Here's the thing. What the best thing to do would be would be to attack the White House and the Biden family for lying and covering it up. And all the Democrats and every one of their supporters, uh, George Clooney's and everybody in the entire Democrat Party for covering it up and lying to us and the media. And you beat the heck out of everybody who's lied, including the Biden family, not Joe himself. That's what you would want to do, in my opinion. Mike, I got a roll, but I really appreciate your call. Um, I want to also share with you two things coming up next. Uh, Do you think who do you think is really running the White House? Is it Joe Biden? Is it Barack Obama or somebody else? I have details on that. You do not want to miss this coming up next. Plus, Parkinson's experts reveal how bad Joe Biden's health could get over the next four years.